salvation and glory, honor and power. He's wonderful, omnipotent, omnipresent. He's wonderful. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you, O oh God, for your presence here today. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to just worship your name one more time. Now, Lord, we ask that you would speak to our hearts. Give us your holy word. Lord, if we could just hear a word from you, we might know what to do this week. Lord, me, your humble servant, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, for you are my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you have Philippians, the first chapter, I just want to read a portion of scripture there. Uh, Philippians 1, starting at the third verse, it says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you are making, for, for you all making requests with joy. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day unto now, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. Our focal verse will be being confident of this very thing that he which have begun a good work in you, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I want to use for a thought this morning, uh, God is working in us. God is working in us. My brothers and sisters, I've discovered during my almost 60 years, I got two days as sister, <laughs> two days to 60 years, uh, and my 14 years of pastoral leadership that no matter how anointed you might be, no matter how strong the hand of the Lord has been with you, none of us have arrived yet. I just said something right there. I know, I know, I know you, 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 you got it going on. But if you really read this word, we just pressing on up the king's highway. None of us have arrived yet. I know you started from the bottom. Now you're up here. But you still got a ways to go in Christ Jesus. Somebody say, I know that's right. We're still far and we're still a work in progress. Say amen if you can. Uh, I'm glad today that I'm not what I used to be. Uh, I, anybody know what I'm talking about? But I'm also, Rem Vance, grateful that I'm also not what I will be in Christ Jesus. Y'all missed that. I, I can't wait to see what I'm going to be. I know what I am now, but I get excited when I know what he could do with me. All I have to do is be willing to allow him to do his thing. You see, beloved, as we journey toward eternity, we are merely clay in the potter's hands. Anybody know what I'm talking about? We're, we're, merely, we're merely clay in Christ's hands and, and he's working on you and, and he's working on me. And if the truth be told, Reverend Douglas, some of us got some rocks in us. And, and, and Christ is needing out some of the rocks that we might be a smooth vessel that he might make us into what he's calling us to be. He's working on us now because he's got great plans 
for us. Is there anybody here that believes that God has great plans for you? Can, can you feel him working on you like a potter works on a piece of clay on the wheel? You spinning around in life and God is, is just fixing things that, that are inside of you. And you, you go to your friends and say, I don't look at it that way. Uh, I, I don't get as angry as I used to. And when I get angry, I don't respond. Can I preach this thing? You got to be able to feel him working on you. Uh, he told Israel in Jeremiah 29, 11, that I know the plans that I have for you. Declares the Lord plans for prosperity and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. God got plans for us, y'all. Not, not where we are right now, and it might be good and some of us might be bad, but he still has plans with your name on it. This morning, if you have Jesus in you, I want you to see that you have several reasons for rejoicing in your relationship with the Lord. And if you're not saved this morning and you're in the sanctuary or you're watching online, I, I, I want you to know that you can be saved uh, if you would come to Jesus by faith. That, that's just my assignment today is to encourage the saved and, to, and to, to, to continue on up the king's highway and to encourage the unsaved to get saved. So I need you to look at your neighbor and ask the pointed question, are you saved? Look at that neighbor on the other side. That one said, yeah. Ask the neighbor and say, are you saved? Either way, we come for encouragement. Somebody say encouragement. You see, in our text, Paul greets this Philippian, the Philippian believers with the prayer of thanksgiving. This was the church near and dear to Paul's heart. Paul shares with them the good news that God is still working on them. He's making us over and over again so that the people that see us see more and more of Jesus. Oh, y'all y'all missed that right there. As he makes you over, it's not to make you look good. It's to make you look like him. Anybody with me out there? Yeah, Paul, Paul, he, he, I have to ask the question, though. Do you look more like Jesus than you did last year? Or do you look the same? Or do you look less like Jesus? I'm talking to church folk. I ain't talking to the unsaved right now. You have to ask yourself the question, how do I look? Do I look like him when people see me? I know it's a tough question. Y'all going to go home asking yourself, <laughs> do I look like Jesus? The Apostle Paul, then he encourages the Christians at Philippi uh, that he's confident. He, 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 he says, look, y'all, I'm confident. I know I love this church. I, I, I appreciate you. Uh, uh, but he uses this strong word to describe the hope that he has in Jesus. He says, I'm confident. Look at the text. I didn't write it. Paul says, I'm confident. Uh, Paul uses this strong word to describe this hope in Jesus. The word confidence in the Greek means to persuade, to convince beyond all doubt. Somebody say all doubt. Come on, talk back to me. All doubt. What Paul is saying in this verse is that he has been persuaded beyond all doubt that he is eternally saved. Listen to what Paul's saying here. He says, I know that I know that I know that I'm saved. And you need to know that you know that you know that you're what? Praise God. Praise God. Look, he says it with confidence. And, and Paul is, is, is saying, you, you know how the court says, uh, we only need to know Reverend Vance beyond a, a reasonable doubt. Court says, uh, a man says, all I need to be sure of 
in order to convict someone is that it's above a reasonable doubt. Paul says, he says it, he says beyond all doubt is what we need to know as it relates to God saving us. How many of y'all believe beyond all doubt that you're saved? Paul is exalting the fact that we can have absolute assurance that we are saved because it's God who started it. And God always finishes what he begins. Can I get a witness? See, there are many out in the world, and if the truth be told, there's some folk in the church who are not sure about their salvation. And I ain't mad at you. I had that season in my life, too, wondering, am I truly saved? <laughs> uh, but, but, but you have to believe beyond all doubt that the word of God is true. You can't allow the world to make you think uh, uh, and worry about whether Islam is saved or whether or not these other religions are saved. You need to focus in on the word of God that God gave you and understand that Christ, I can't even, I'm getting ready to get ahead of myself first lady, I got to slow down. We need to believe beyond all reasonable doubt that we are what? Saved. Do you know for sure? Paul makes our confidence in Jesus personal by using the word in the text. He says, you, look at, look at it, that text again. The assurance that he speaks of is personal in nature. You need to know that you need to know based on the evidence that has been given that you're saved. You need to know that the word of God is true. That the word of God says what is said. And you need to understand that big mama can't get you in. I know, I know Big Mama been saved a long time, but Big Mama is personally saved. <laughs> and she'll tell you faster than anybody, baby, you need to go to church and you need to get saved. She didn't say you can operate on her salvation. He, she brought you to church so that you could get it for yourself. Somebody shout glory in this place. You see, she needed saving and so do you. So Paul has this confidence in the text. And his confidence is powerful that he would tell the church the way he does that there's nothing more liberating than knowing that you are saved because when you know that you are saved, it grants us liberty. Those who are set free are what? Free indeed. When you realize how free you are, that, that God has your back in everything, it doesn't mean that everything is going to go well, but you know that I'm free because God has me in spite of all that I might go through. I know I'm free because God got my back. I might get knocked down, but I know the first hand that reached down to pick me up is going to be God. Uh, I, I know that I'm free because those whom he sets free is free indeed, and I I know I'm free because when trouble comes, I know God will stand in front of me. He'll stand behind me and he'll stand beside me. I know I'm free because friends get few sometimes when you get into trouble. I know I'm free because Jesus won't leave me nor forsake me. You see, you no longer, when you're free, you no longer live in fear. And you no longer live in doubt. It's freeing to be able to say that I know that I'm saved. And you can say it to anybody you come across. See, sometimes uh, some folk uh, get saved here at the church and can't go home and tell the family that they saved. I'm telling the truth. I've, I, I've lived it. I've watched it. I've been pastoring long enough. Some folk will get saved in here on Sunday morning and we will free, we'll be afraid to tell their parents that they're saved. So I'm going to give you a couple of reasons uh, as to why what will happen because God is in us. I know we've had an election. I better not talk about that. I'll hit it in Bible study first. I, I'm coming. I, I can't not say nothing, but I, 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 I'll see where the Lord takes me. Uh, I know that I'm saved, but. But before I take my seat, let me give you the three points and we see where the Lord take us. That election, you know, it's, it's swirling. It's, it's swirling. And, and, and I, I, so I, I got to get through these points and then see, we'll see where the Lord goes. So first, first, 
First, if, if, if God is in you, if God is in you, you, we must answer the question of how does God complete his work in us? If he's in you, if he's not in you, let's get him in you. You got you to gotta believe by faith. But if he's, if he's, if he's in you, I want to give you three theological terms that come to mind in the work of Jesus in us. Now, they 10 cent words. They long, they loud, they sound long, and they sound like big words, and they sound important. Uh, but when you catch the meaning, they are, they, you go understand where God has taken us. First of all, there's justification. Can I teach this morning? We are justified when we have Christ in us. We are justified by Christ. What, what are you talking about, preacher? It is the blood of Christ that makes the difference. Uh, to be justified means to be declared righteous. Y'all with me? It means that at some point in your life, you're going to have to stand before a righteous God. And if you are not righteous, you will be condemned uh, to, 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 to go to that other place. And it, it is the blood of Jesus that will justify us. It is the blood that will cover us that God might not see the sinful man that I really am. He's only going to see the blood of his son. Somebody say we are justified. Romans 5 and 1 says, therefore, since we have been justified through our faith, we have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Justification has to do with our past. It, once you get saved, justification, is, 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 it, 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 it takes place. Christ has justified you. You are being justified. So it's, it has to do with what happens in the past. If you are not saved, you have to be justified first. You got to get saved in order for Christ to justify you y'all with me i'm just teaching right here in this first point god began a good work in you when you first believed uh, in christ and you are justified by faith so he completes his work by justifying us before god the father god completes his work through us today through sanctification so we got justification now we have what sanctification this is where we are right now to be sanctified means to be set apart. Y'all understanding me? For God's purpose. Some of us been set apart, but it ain't been for God. Hear me in this place. You set apart and you've been doing some stuff, but it ain't been for God. And some of us have, have been justified, but we struggling in the sanctification area because we have not set apart our lives so that God can use us. It's getting tight today, but it's all right. We still, you still justified by the blood, but but we get we struggle in the sanctification part because we don't want to yield our members to God. We don't want to go where He tells us to go. We don't want to do what He tells us to do. We don't want to say what He tells us to say. See, sanctification means God is setting you apart from, and, and to be set apart means He takes you out of something. He sets you apart from it that you might do something for him. First Thessalonians 5 and 23 says, may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. I, 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 I hear that word through and through. And, and I get the sense, Reverend Rodney, that sometimes sanctification is a little difficult. <laughs> he, that means he got to go deeper. He said through and through. It says, may your whole spirit, your soul, body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Sanctification has to do with what we're going through right now. It has to do with the present. Justification is the past. Sanctification is in the present. It's happening right now. God sanctifies you day in and day out that you might be able to do his will. Now, I know there's some things that God has had you to do that you shout your triumphs over. Some of you have been called into the reverendship. Some of you have been called to deacons. Some of you have been called to help the sick and the poor. And as you set yourself apart for that work, God is sanctifying you. He's molding you to look like him. It's a process that takes place from now until we get till he comes, comes back. Till he comes back to get us. God completes his work through us, finally, through glorification. So you have justification, sanctification, and now we have glorification. To be glorified means to be perfected in holiness. 
Ah, now we're talking about looking like not only Jesus, but God the Father. We're talking about looking like just like the one who created us. Romans 8 and 29. For those who God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son. So we got to look like Jesus. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. This is the word of God. I'm not, I'm not giving you anything else other than the word of God. Glorification has to do with the future. When Christ returns, the dead in Christ will be raised up. And those believers still living will be transformed, is what the word says. And we will be glorified in, the, in God's presence. You can't get to a glorified God and not be glorified. We'll burn up in his presence if we have not been glorified. Y'all with me? We have to understand that God is God. We will be glorified when we meet him. Uh, those he justified, he also glorified. Uh, there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between justification and glorification. Uh, everyone who's justified will be glorified. No exceptions, my brothers and sisters. We are we, we, what we are, the last six words of Romans 30 are important. They say the same thing as Philippians 1, 6. He who began a good work in you will carry it. That's justification. He began a good work in you. The Bible says he will carry it on to completion. That's sanctification until the day of Jesus Christ. That's glorification. I said all that just to say that one sentence. <laughs> you ought to praise God that he's still working in you. You, you. You're not all that you could be, but you thank God you're not what you used to be. You thank God that you have been justified and that you are in the sanctification process. And as you walk in that sanctification process, God is doing miracle working things in your life. But secondly, as I hasten on, it's already almost 10 to 12. Uh, when, I, when God is working in us, we realize that there is work for us to do. We realize now that we're in sanctification and that each of us has some work to do. Even during the, this difficult, there it is, Reverend Vance, this difficult political season. There is still work to be done. It, it's, it's, it's not just the missionary's job. It's not just the deacon's job. It's not just these preachers job to, to reach out to this dying world. Uh, uh, when God is working in us, we don't care what the political situation is. We don't get caught up with who's in charge. Uh, because if you will look back in your Bible, when Israel went into Babylon, they, David and Daniel and all, I mean, Daniel and Shadrach, they refused to bow down to whatever King Nebuchadnezzar and those kings were doing. Do it. They held true to who they were. So we can't get worried about Mr. Trump and his cronies because they have no control over our God. Uh, we ain't bowing down to nothing that they do in Washington because God has control over everything. Uh, no matter how much we might have to bend the knee to prayer, God is going to step up and he's going to step right in. Don't get too comfortable while we in captivity because we are good God almighty we might have to deal with some things while we're in captivity but God is going to bring us out and we got to be just like Nehemiah when we come out we got to go back and build the wall we got to fix the city we got to do everything God called us to do yeah we messed up but that's all right Trump is there now, but in the end, God is going to sit high on the throne. There's only one throne and only one God. Oh, I feel like preaching this morning. Y'all sit down. I got to get to this third point. Let me close. Let me close. Let me close. See, 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 when he's in us, there's work for us to do. We don't know how long we're going to be in. I, I get that. But we do know that we still serve a mighty God, no matter who he allows to be in. Can I get some help in this place? Because at first, I got a little 
depressed. I was. I, mean, I, was, I know y'all saying he talking politics. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I'm talking to the king of kings. That's the biggest politics you can get. Right there, he in control of everything. But now, after praying, I started feeling a little better. I started realizing who was really in control. I, and uh, I, I don't care, even if she had won, he's still in control. Y'all missing, y'all missing it. <laughs> don't let that stuff dictate how you respond to your service to God. Because we got a king that we serve. <laughs> I don't serve the political structure of this world. I serve the political structure of a heavenly world. I call on my king when I get in trouble. I serve him and I do what he tells me to do. I go where he tells me to go. I give everything he tells me to give. I ain't worried about what's happening here because I know he's got it all in the palm of his hands somebody shout glory in here all right all right i gotta get to the third one i gotta get to the third one when god is working in us he's completing the good work not that he only completed in us but he completes the work that he started in his church see we often say that the church is in us yeah i know but he started the movement of the church, the body of the church. God is not only completing the good work he began in you, he's completing the good work he began in his church. He started the church. He could have said, y'all go on, y'all all y'all own little churches. He could have said, you don't have to come together. But that is not what he said. He said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves. He said we ought to come together and we ought to use each other and lean on each other and love on each other uh, so so it's not that you yeah the church is in you uh, but the body has to come together there's some pieces in here there's some eyes and some hands and some legs and some feet right here in this church and if the eyes don't see the enemy coming and you ain't here in the sanctuary when we need you to be looked Oh, I'm getting ready to get in some trouble right here. Let's see if I can e explain this thing to you and I'll sit down. Uh, uh, because we are one body as the church, uh, some of you are eyes and God has called you to see some things. Uh, but if you ain't present to see, the church is what? We blind right now because he gave you the power to see. Pastor ain't got all power. Only God has all power. He's given power to every member, to every, if you the hand. And you ain't showing up and we need something picked up it cannot be picked up because you God has called you to be the hand if you are the heart of the church and you ain't here we lose our heartbeat y'all missing this thing right now if you got the feet and the church need to go somewhere church is important y'all sit down i'm almost there i'm almost there while, while while paul's words in philippians 1 3 through 6 apply to us as individuals it applies to us as a body uh, the letter he wrote if you read the letter it wasn't to the pastor it wasn't to the diaconate it wasn't to the assistant pastor it wasn't to the musicians it wasn't to the praise team if you read the text, the text, it says, what does somebody read it for me? What does it say? To who? Who is it, who is it written to? Help me out. To all the saints in Christ Jesus. He, he, he didn't specifically say, I'm sending this to the head of the Philippian church. He said, I'm telling everybody. Everybody is responsible for what needs to take place. Everybody's responsible for how you operate with Jesus in you. Oh, help me preach this thing. And, and, and when Jesus is in you, don't get comfortable with what you're doing. We get comfortable with preaching. We do. 
And some of y'all been called the pastor. I'm just telling the truth. I'm going to shame the devil this morning. We get comfortable with praying. And some of y'all been called to preach. Let, let's, 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 let's shame the devil this morning. There's some things God has been calling some of y'all to do that you, you're stuck in that sanctification phase of, is it me who's in charge? Is Christ in charge or am I in charge? And Christ says, I want you to do this, but I feel more comfortable doing this. I, I, I feel more comfortable on deacon board. Don't nobody bother me. I get up, do devotions, say my prayers, but you want me to do something else. You, you want me to go out and serve in the community, and I, I, but I don't feel comfortable talking to people, but it ain't about you. Help me preach this thing this morning, Lord. He has more work for you to do. I know it feels good. You come into church and you get a word from the Lord. And yes, you can go out and feel good about next week. You learn a little something to help you go along the way. But what are you doing when you leave this place? What more? See, the, the issue ought to be, Lord, what more can I do? That, that's, that's where we need to be. What more can I do? Ah, You got God in you. Anybody here know you got God in you? If you got God in you, then you should be contagious. I just said something. I know it sounds bad. But don't get too close to me. Because you might get saved. Because the spirit of God in me might rub off on you. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I'm contagious. I already know that. I'm actually more contagious than COVID. Y'all missing it. Y'all missing it. Because if you talk to me, I might spew some Jesus on you and you might catch it and run out telling a dying world what it means to be saved. You see, beloved, I had a blood transfusion, and I've never been the same. My blood has salvation running through it. And, and those who come in contact with me are subject to catch the Holy Ghost. Y'all, 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 can, can that happen when they touch you, y'all? Uh, you, you see, some of you have, have had the transfusion. You've been justified. Ah, but, but, but you, you, you went back out there and got reinfected by the world. And, and, and because you've been reinfected by the world, you need a booster shot. You, you, you need a reinjection of the blood that, that you might be made whole again. And, and I know uh, uh, this analogy sounds a little crazy, but this is what God gave me. And I'm just telling you, some of us are, are, are on the path and... And, and if we come in contact with folk, they see Jesus before they see us. I know, because when I walk in certain rooms, uh, folks start moving away from me just because of my presence. I know my breath don't stink. I carry the mints. I do everything I watch well. But I know it's the Spirit of God moving people that don't want to come in contact with the blood. And you have to ask yourself, are you feeling and seeing some of the same things in your life? Because if everybody want to be around you, then you must be with them and not with him. I'm almost done. Y'all not hearing me. Because if the world clings to you, then you are part of the world. But if the world begins to step away and look at you first there's something strange about the blood that's in you they don't want to be around it but you got to keep walking towards them y'all you got to keep walking towards them eh? because it's important that we infuse them and not them infusing us remember we have jesus in us and if, if, if I touch deep, man, stay right there, stay right there, stay right there. Come on, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. I need you one more minute. If I touch him, 
with the love of God and I infect him and he goes home on fire for the Lord and he begins to touch his family. And it's a lot of them advances if y'all really want to know. He may not get them all infected right away because y'all know how viruses work. He may not get them all infected, but he will infect somebody. Somebody going to catch it. And it may take time. You can sit down, Dick Vance. I don't mean to make you stand up. It may take time for the remainder of the folk and the family to get infected. But we have to be patient. And we have to be true and obedient to the one who's in us. See, it doesn't make sense for Jesus gets in us that we might give him to somebody else. That we might reach out and give the plan of salvation to somebody else. He didn't get in us to give us all these great gifts. I know that's what folk believe. Lord, bless me with a new car. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. But how many people did you bless with who he is? See, we'll accept that blessing, but then we have to ask ourselves. I come to church every Sunday, and I know it say, he get mad at us on his birthday. I ain't mad at y'all. I'm just telling you the truth so that when you leave here, that you will begin to infect those who are around you. And when, when you get a little sick and need a booster shot, Come on, we play a prayer. We pray a prayer of rededication. We pass the needed from the pulpit to the door. Because if you think that all of us are just going to go out here and do it the right way, no. That's why the church is here. Because we all fall short. But we got to keep trying. We got to dust ourselves off when we fall. And we got to get on back out there. And I, I, I kept asking the Lord. I said, I don't want to talk about infections and things of that nature. That don't. But he said, tell them. They'll get it. They'll get it. They'll know the people that they, they touch with the word. The blood moves from heart to heart, breast to breast. It's the blood. It ain't nothing I did. I can't give you salvation. I can't justify you. I can't sanctify you. And I definitely can't glorify you. But I can give you the one who can stick with me. And we guarantee, I guarantee you, guarantee you, if you believe, as, as the text said, as the text said, be, a, be confident of this one thing, that he who is in you has created, has created a good work in you and he will see it, perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Trust and believe in that. If you don't or if you're not sure, see me, see First Lady. We'll give you what you need if you're unsure of your salvation. And the Lord is telling me right now that there are a few of you who are. And that's okay. We, we, can, we, can, we can get you tuned up, get you right where you need to be. I want you to know that you're saved, that you have Jesus in you. And because you have Jesus in you, you are free. Free to serve him as, as an individual. And as the church, we have to know this and feel it in our hearts. Shall we all stand? I I would have you to know that it's important, important. And if you, if you go back over the last four or five weeks that I've been able to preach, a lot of my messages have been geared towards salvation. It's been geared towards us saving folk. Time is winding down. When we begin to see what the word of God has said in the book of Revelation and what we see now, We ought to be in a hurry to get not just our family saved, but everybody. I don't want, baby, I don't want to see you go where where, where this place is taking us. Where, Where what's taking place is taking us, we need to be prepared. 
Heaven is a prepared place for what? Prepared people. If there's a man, woman, boy, or girl, and you are in this sanctuary or you're watching us live on uh, Facebook Live, uh, and you want to know Jesus, you don't know Jesus, I, I offer Christ to you. This is the faithful part. This is your opportunity today to join this band, just this band of saved souls, this, this band who has been infected with the blood of Jesus. And, and that's not a bad thing for us because that blood has healing power. Am I right about it? Am I right about it? If you don't know Jesus, slip out your seat, come on down to the front, give your heart to God, give your hand to the preacher. We're going to pray and we're going to be sure that you know who your Lord and Savior is. We offer Christ to you. You can come. You can come. If you're watching on Facebook, all you have to type in is I want to be saved. And this is what you need to do in order to give your life. You need to, as they say, it's easy as what? A, B, C. You need to admit that you're a sinner. For all have come short of the glory. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Then you must believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. That he bled, suffered, and died on our behalf. Uh, rose up on the third day. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And then you must confess it. You must confess it. You must confess it. Will there be one? If you're looking for a church home, the Grace Baptist Church opens its doors to you. We want you to be sure that this is going to be your praying ground. Uh, we don't want you to just come because you feel good. We want you to come because you know God is calling you to be here. And if he's called you to be here, then you will work here. You will do what he's telling you to do here. And then finally, uh, if you've been in a backslidden condition, backslidden condition simply means that you started out on the way and uh, you got a little lost and you stopped serving your God. And we just want you to get back into a right relationship with him. And we generally come and we have prayer, a, re a prayer of restoration. So if, you, if you're under any of those three conditions, you may come at this point. If you saved and you know you saved, you may be seated. If you're not saved, please remain standing. God bless you. It looks like we have a saved house. Let's give God some praise. I know it wasn't a howdy howdy message. On my birthday, I, maybe I'll hit y'all back another time, but, but I have to tell the truth as God gives it to me. And it is so important for us to operate as, as if we know that God is in us. And I'm, I'm looking back there, and I look like I thought I was that. Amen. Look at that. Is that Mother Rogers? Amen. Come on. Somebody get her a mic. Let her have a word. Let her have a word. Amen. She doesn't have to stand up. Just they bring it, we bring it to her. She got it like that in here. Amen. Welcome home. Welcome home. <laughs> yes, God. I didn't know I had to get <laughs> I didn't know I have to get up and say anything, but it's so right. much pleasure to see all the same faces that I left here. Majority of them are still here now. And I thank God so much for my pastor because I keep it still having me in my mind. Still my son also. <laughs> and, <laughs> and this is my son. Oh, and, uh, amen. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, before she leaves, uh, I'm going to ask the Hannah Circle to have prayer with her, please, Rem Vance. Yeah. Um, we can all stand and prepare our hearts and minds to be dismissed. I'm sorry, birthday presentations, I apologize, I apologize, I won't get in no trouble.